Well, joining us on this edition of the News Review, we have a uh, senior research fellow at Global Policy Institute, Mr. George Samueli, and uh, also from Indore, Norway, we have author and commentator John Stepping. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Let's start off with uh, Mr. Samueli in uh, Budapest. Mr. Samueli, uh, give us your thoughts on uh, the recent uh, round of talks in uh, Kazakhstan and what are your expectations? Well, unfortunately, I don't really have too many expectations. I mean, the Astana process has now been going for quite a long time. It started actually in 2016. And uh, what it has achieved is that it is the only show in town. It is the only uh, peace process that one can actually say deserves the, the title peace process. Um, however, it doesn't really move uh, the game forward very much because uh, the situation on the ground is what it is. Uh, Turkey has put down a marker and it's, uh, it's going to retain its uh, influence uh, over Idlib. Uh, it hasn't uh, complied with its uh, obligations so that it will remove the jihadi fighters from Idlib. Uh, it's using its position there um, as leverage against the Syrian government. Um, and as, as, as far as um, uh, you know, Russia and Iran is concerned, there's not really very much that they can do about it because Russia really doesn't want to get involved in, a, in any kind of a, an armed conflict with Turkey because it has too many other uh, <laughs> uh, irons in the fire, too many other uh, deals going on with Turkey. So I think Astana is really in a, in a kind of um, impasse. But to, you know the alternatives, which is, is somehow uh, sponsored by the West, are going. You know, are, are even in a worse state because the West, unlike Astana, uh, stipulates that uh, that uh, the removal of the government of Bashar al-Assad is a condition for uh, talks. Um, well, that's just a non-starter. So, as I say, you know, I, I don't see much progress, but uh, it is the only show in town. All right, let's cross over to John Steckling in Indoroy. Mr. Steckling, give us your thoughts. Uh, what are your expectations uh, for, the, uh, for this 16th round of peace talks? Uh, and uh, what's on the agenda right now is confidence building measures uh, and um, a prisoner swap, et cetera. What do you think? Well, I mean, I'm not sure we should even describe. Um, the Astana meetings as as a peace process, uh, but but you have to look uh, that on the one side we have what Stephen Gowans called Washington's long war on Syria. This goes back decades and decades. Uh, the U.S. has openly uh, stated, made very clear that they want Assad gone. Um, that's as Mr. Samueli said, the precondition for for any discussion at all. But <clears throat> under Trump and Biden has continued this policy, and this goes back to Obama even. I mean, it was Obama that employed um, talk fury fighters, jihadists, and so forth. And then Trump created safe zones in theory um, to protect Syrians. But it was all a justification to keep American troops in the region. Um, and, and the U.S. actually occupies, like, I believe, still a fourth of the country. So, I mean, it's, it, the, the toll has taken, um, that it's taken on Syrians is, is just unimaginable. I mean, it's a, yeah, 11 million people have been um, displaced. Um, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people have died. <clears throat> it's always hard to get figures, but it's been a brutal um, decade and a half. Um, for Syrians and and Turkey has has their plans. The U.S. has a very clear agenda. They're not even part of this discussion. Um, for Russia and Iran, they they simply want to take stock of things and and uh, it's like damage control, perhaps is the best way to look at it. But but the real issue is why is the U.S. there? Why does the U.S. impose sanctions on disobedient countries? Countries that won't put in Western business-friendly, you know, puppet leaders. 
countries that retain independence and autonomy are, from Washington's point of view, going to be punished. And that's what we see with Syria. And, um, you know, all the, the global NGOs, Amnesty International and so forth, always do what Washington tells them to do. Um, they describe the Assad regime as brutal and sadistic and so forth and so on. Um, there's never a question of Arab self-determination. There's never a question of Arab nationalism being allowed, um, let alone socialism or communism or anything of the sort. Um, the U.S. has a very narrow um, definition of what is what is acceptable, and that is essentially to roll over and um, and turn the country over to them and to Western capital. And, and that's that's what we've seen here for a while, and that's not going to change in, in the immediate future. I mean, Syrians have fought courageously um, to push back uh, U.S. interests and, and proxies, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a stalemate at this point. Okay, that's an interesting point you brought up there, Mr. Stepling. Uh, given how the situation on the ground has changed, uh, opposite to uh, the U.S. interests and their proxies, as you just mentioned, then how can the status quo change? How can Syrians get the United States and uh, uh, how their interests are intertwined with it uh, and their proxies are there? How can they get it out? Well, I mean, well, I, it's very know, Oh, sorry. I mean, I... Yeah, I'll get back to you, I'm Mr. Sorry. Samuel, in a second. No, this is for Mr. Stepling. <laughs> I can't hear everyone. It's for you, are Mr. You Stepling. Yeah, it's for you. Yeah. I think, look, the, 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 this is a... U.S. imperialist um, assault that goes back decades, and it, that's not going to change until somehow the U.S. Um, is is decides that it's not in their interest to pursue this coup d'état against the Assad government. Um, until that, they make that calculation. Um, I don't know what can change. Mr. Samuel, same question to you. Mr. Steffling mentioned that the main issue here is why uh, is the United States there? Uh, give us your thoughts on that, and how can the status quo change for Syria right now? Well, it's very difficult uh, because, of course, the United States has uh, uh, changed its rationale for um, occupying uh, Syria over the years. If you remember uh, when Obama uh, introduced forces uh, into Syria, it was supposedly to fight ISIS. Well, of course, he didn't do any uh, fighting of ISIS. Um, and then under Trump, uh, it changed again um, into, um, uh, it, it, but well, first of all, I mean, it was a, the idea that they were actually supporting the Kurds. It was the, it was the Kurds, it was the, the big uh, strategic goal of the United States, protecting the Kurds. And then or Trump then changed that into, well, we've got to guard the oil fields. Um, and, you know, the, the Biden administration has basically continued uh, with this policy. The United States has no intention of uh, withdrawing from Syria. But one should also say uh, Turkey has its own agenda. And, you know, one can say what well, it was the same agenda that they had uh, when the whole thing started in 2011. They want to revise the Treaty of Sevre, whereby they lost a very a large chunk of Ottoman Empire, which is now part of Syria. That's the ultimate goal, um, and so they maintain their influence. They obviously, you know, doing also trying to thwart the uh, the SDF, the, uh, the Syrian Democratic Forces, which they they say is linked to the uh, uh, the Kurdish extremists. But and they're using their uh, the, their proxies, the jihadis in Idlib, to achieve their goal. It's going to be very hard uh, to get uh, Turkey out. This is quite an important uh, goal for uh, Turkey, and. Russia has its own interest. I mean, it, it's, it's, Turkey is an important ally or um, partner in many other uh, spheres for Russia. And so it doesn't want to push any serious confrontation over Idlib with Turkey. And so we are in a kind of a stalemate. Every time there's a threat to uh, mount an offensive against uh, Idlib, Turkey kicks up a fuss. And then usually Russia and Syria uh, back down and say, OK, well, we'll work something out. So unfortunately, it's hard to see any, any you know, how, how there could be uh, more progress. All right. Thanks a lot, gentlemen. George Samuel, joining right. us from Budapest. Author and commentator John Stepling speaking to us from Indoor, Norway.
With that, it brings us to an end here on this edition of Press TV's News Review. But do stay tuned. There's plenty more to come here on Press TV. Stay tuned.